The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Murder on Margin. It was three in the morning when Edward Jameson became himself again. He was sitting on a bench at the edge of a park. He couldn't remember coming there. It didn't matter. Because the whole nightmare was coming back to him rapidly. His mind hurling frightening pieces of memory at him. The memory of a blinding rage. The gun flash. Murder. He wondered if he'd been walking to escape. If the thought of hiding had brought him here to the park, and he told himself that it was foolish, there wasn't any escape. Her husband, Barney, knew the whole story. He was probably telling it to the police now. Edward stood up, shook his head, started to walk again, this time toward the police station. Seventh Precinct, Sergeant Burke. Oh, yeah, Dave. Happened over on East 54th Street. Yeah, I think we got it sewed up already. Uh, just a minute. Yes? Who do you want? My name is Edward Jameson. I, I want to talk to someone about that shooting on East 54th Street. What about it? I can tell you the whole story. I want to. Call your bank, Dave. Something's up. Okay, Jameson. What do you want to tell us? Well, it really began when... Aren't you taking this down? Should I? Yes, I think so. I did it. I'm the murderer. Yes. That was how Edward Jameson confessed to murder. Simply. But the things that led you to the 7th Precinct Station weren't so simple, were they, Edward? They went back many weeks to happier days, as the newspapers put it. The days when you were free to decide what to do with your own life. Also, Miss Turner, remind me on the 4th that Mrs. Jameson's having some kind of a function at the house. I can get the 7 o'clock instead of the 5.06. Yes, Mr. Jameson. And that the 8th is Mrs. Jameson's anniversary. Well, our anniversary. Our 5th. Must get her something. And get Mrs. Jameson something? Yeah, that's a good question. What? Well... Could get her a campaign ribbon with wooden battle stars, but... Uh, no, nah, I'll figure it out. Well, that's all I have. You anything for me? Oh, just a few. Uh, Mrs. Burton would like you to call before the opening of the market no, tomorrow. No, fine. Remind me. Uh, your class luncheon tomorrow at noon at the Harvard Club. Good. No, I'll take it. Hello, Jameson speaking. Hello, Pappy. Wall Street still in business? Oh, Miss Leeds. How are you? We should know better than you. Well, the market was good today. Quiet, but firm. Oh, it sounds nice. Yes, yes, I think we've tested the lows here and can expect an uptrend from here on. I can feel that mink coat now. It may not go that high. But um, I think this is as good a place as any to get in. 
Uh, fine. <laughs> fine. Now, uh, what's your address so I can have my secretary mail you the form? Uh, you know the address, silly. <laughs> yes, yes, that's 522 East 54th Street. Always has been. Uh, anything else I can do for you now? Uh-huh. I'm lonesome, Pappy. Oh, certainly. As soon as the signed papers are in our hands, we can begin. Wait and go home on the 602 tonight, huh, Pappy? So we can have a few minutes together? Well, I'm not sure that can be arranged. Ah, come on, come on. I'll meet you in the Commodore Grill in 15 minutes, huh? Well, all right. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you for calling. Good night. Uh, Miss Turner, uh, mail a margin agreement and discretionary trading form to Miss Susan Leeds, 522 East 54th Street tonight, please. Yes, sir. Oh, and... Um, Call my home and tell Mrs. Jameson I'm delayed. I have a few matters to attend to. Ask her to meet me at the station. I'll be taking the 602. Dear. Hello, Ed. What's the matter? Something wrong? No, nothing wrong. Why, does there seem to be? Yes, kind of. I wouldn't say you were exactly effervescent. Frankly, I'm not. I've been sitting at that station for one hour and a half. Or is that a big surprise to you? Doris, I'm sorry. I asked Miss Turner to phone you. I was getting a later train. What's the matter? Would the economic balance of the country be upset if you took five minutes to call yourself? Now, that's not the point. I... Oh, darn it, why should I have to go into a long explanation just because I get a later train? I don't reach for my hat the minute the market closes. There are other things to do. I have letters to write and calls to make and contacts to keep up. I'm sure. Some of those contacts you make at that local saloon must be a real help. Doris! Oh, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous or not, this is the last time I wait at any station like I did tonight. I have other things to do with my time. Okay, okay. Why are you going home this way? We're not going home. We're going to the Blacks for dinner. And do me a favor just for once. When it's time to leave, please don't insist on one for the road. That's when you fall apart. Nobody else seems to think so. Oh, yes, I'm sure. But they're not married to you. Well, that can be fixed. What was I that? I said... Uh, nothing, dear. Nothing. <laughs> With the prologue of Murder on Margin, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. Friends, you hear a lot of talk these days about how long a motor oil will last. But the more important thing is how long will it make your motor last? And on that score, I have some interesting facts for you. In an actual road test, identical motors were run over 70,000 miles, some using today's finest regular motor oil, the others using signal, signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil, that improved type signal lubricant which combines 100% pure paraffin base with scientific compounds. When these motors were torn down for inspection, those using Signal Premium had only one-sixth as much carbon deposit and one-third less cylinder wear. So what does that mean to you? Well, less carbon means that your motor runs quieter, smoother, and less cylinder wear means that your motor keeps its like-new power longer. Good reason, I'd say, for making your next oil change a change to the improved type signal oil that's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal premium compounded motor oil. And now, back to the whistler. mind, at least, it's out in the open, isn't it, Edward? That your married life with Doris isn't what you want. It's all too average, dull, lacking in the excitement you feel in just being around Susan Lee. You're determined to do something about it, aren't you, Edward? Something that will eliminate the explanations, the excuses. Turn those stolen moments with Susan into days, years that belong to you. Why, Mr. 
Jameson. What a pleasant surprise. How do you do, Miss Leeds? May I come in? Please do. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Hello, big man. <laughs> Did you get home all right last night? You mean from the Commodore? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm big girl now. Yeah, good for you. I wish I could give that cheerful a report. What happened to you? Mm, usual harangue with Doris, followed by dinner and drinks at the Blacks. I've been ahead all day. Oh, poor baby. Well, you sit down and rest up while I fix up my face. By the way, I uh, got those papers. Oh, are they all signed? Yep, but I don't understand them. Well, when you boil them all down, what they say is that you agree to have a margin account with our firm, that I have full power of attorney to trade in securities and to make withdrawals. Oh, it's wonderful. Can you open the account with a dollar? <laughs> no, silly, of course not. <laughs> it's going to be some account. That's all I can spare. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'll uh, put off all the capital necessary. Well, I didn't understand why you put the account in my name, though. Well, that's what we call a dummy account. Dummy? I don't think I like that. <laughs> Honey, I'm not permitted as a customer's man to trade in my own name. So I use yours instead. See? Nope. <laughs> Well, don't you worry your pretty head about it. <laughs> It'll be all right. Oh, Pappy, whatever you say. Mm. Anybody ever tell you you're as pretty as a picture? Oh, yes. Many times. Mm -hmm. Who? You, that's who. <laughs> oh, what do you say we do it up brown tonight, huh? Kind of calls for a celebration anyway. Well, it's now 4.30. How brown can you get it between now and the 6.02 you must take? Ah, uh, tonight it's different. I have the car in town, and I can always break down in the parkway. <laughs> Catch on? <laughs> oh, darling, sometimes you amaze me. You mean we have the whole evening together? And we won't be home until morning. <laughs> well, at least almost morning. Here we are. Amen. Did you uh, have fun, Susan? Yes, I did. It's been a wonderful evening. Well, uh... Now, don't get out, Ed. I'll let myself in. It's pretty late. You don't want to get into trouble. I won't get into any trouble. What am I, a mouse or something? <laughs> no, darling. You're the fun-loving Rover boy, but it's still pretty late and you have a long drive ahead of you. So be a good boy. And run along home. Uh, all right. I don't like it. Someday we won't have to say goodbye like this. Of course, darling. Good night, Susan. Good night. And uh, drive carefully going home, Pappy. I don't want anything to happen to you. Okay, I will. Don't worry. Bye. Well, was that the Westport Flash that just took off? Did his keeper die or just let him off for one night? <laughs> <laughs> just for one night. But she gets him back none the worse for wear. Oh, that's nice. Barney, we got to have a board meeting, as they say in Wall Street. Uh -huh. The Westport Flash has opened a trading account in my name. A trading account? Well, well. Thoughtful of him, wasn't it? Very. We've been working for years for a setup as good as this, haven't we, baby? But I never expected it to be this good. His money in my name. Neat, huh? You said it. Exactly. Oh, who in the world is this about? Ed, what, what are you doing back here? Well, I'm back, that's all. Are you all right? Tonight I own the world, Susan. Let me in. Very late, Ed. Have you any idea what time it is? Time is no longer of the essence, as they say. Now, look, Ed, I have an early appointment. I've got to get some sleep. Now, be a good boy and go on home. Yeah, I've been home. I'm not going back. Doris and I argued and we're through. We're finished. When did this happen? A couple of hours ago. No man can stand that kind of thing for long. Ed, all married people have spats. This is no spat. This is it. Now, you don't mean that. Yes, I do. Told her what a head in yakety yakety yakety. She doesn't understand me. She never did. Well, maybe you don't give her a chance to. Oh, no, don't I? Oh, now be fair, Ed. Doris is a wonderful girl. 
How do you know? He married you, didn't he? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Now, all the more reason for you not to go off half-cocked. You can't just tear up years together like that. Be sensible, Ed, please. You, you mean that, don't you? From the bottom of my heart. Oh, Susan, when they made you, they threw away the mold. No wonder I love you so much. You always think of the other fellow first. Darling, I just don't want you in trouble. And I don't like to see you unhappy. Oh, my baby. My darling. You understand me, don't you? Yes, yes, of course. Now, you go on down to the club and get some sleep with what's left of the night, and tomorrow you call Doris and make up with her. I'm not No gonna... arguments now, Susan knows best. No, I mean it. I'm through, and that's final, final, final. Ed, Ed my darling... Please think it over carefully. We've been so patient. We've been so decent. Let's be sure. So very sure for everybody's sake. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm a free man. No one can stop me from asking you what I wanted to ask you from the very first moment I laid my eyes on you. And that's... Tomorrow, honey. Phone me tomorrow. Now, good night, Ed. Oh, all right. That's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. Come on, come on, get some sleep like a good boy. Good night, Pappy. Good night, sugar. Funny. He's left, eh? Yeah. Did you hear? Not all of it. Well, you should have. He's going to blow his happy home. Oh? Well, why don't these guys ever get along with their wives? I don't know, but this one's going to want to marry me. You can say I blame him. You're quite a dish. That's why I married you myself. But what happens now with his wife out of the way? I can't hold him at arm's length forever, and we can't afford to let our pigeon out of the coop. Not this pigeon. Now, how much is in that trading account of yours, if you'll pardon the expression? <laughs> a lot. Better than 30000 All in your name. Perfect. And tomorrow morning, you sell everything in that account. See, it almost seems... In... Shame to do it. He trusts me so much. Look, baby, don't go moral on me at this late date. It might spoil our beautiful relationship. I... <laughs> don't worry about me, darling. Don't give me reason to. Now, tomorrow morning we cash out that account. And as soon as we get a check for the proceeds, we'll vacate this apartment. And if it'll make you feel any better, we'll mail Jameson the key as a gesture of goodwill. How does it feel to have a rich wife? Fine, fine. we we'll buy a house in Westport and live graciously. Sure. I'll plan menus and play bridge with the girls. And you can go into the office every day. Yeah? Over my dead body. It's too bad, Edward, that you couldn't have listened in. Couldn't have known the truth about Susan. But then you wouldn't have believed it, would you? Even though there are signs around that kind of people, signs that can easily be read, you wouldn't see them. Because an infatuation like yours can be very blind. Can't it, Edward? Very blind. Hello? Susan, hold on to your hat. It's done. Ed? Yeah, I'm out at LaGuardia Field. She just left for Reno. My wife and her mother. You sure, Ed? Now, listen, I drove them to the airport and put them on the plane. Oh, I'm so happy about it. I think I could crawl out of that receiver you're holding to your ear. Oh. So wait there, and I'll be right over. At 11.30 in the morning? Morning, noon, night. Who cares? I I'll tell you what you do. I have several things I simply can't change at this short notice. So you meet me here at uh, 6.30. I'll have cocktails waiting. 6.30? Oh, it's a lifetime. <laughs> Sorry, dear, if I'd known. Well, it's okay, Angel. I'll run back to the house for a couple of things, and then I'll probably kill some time at the club. So if you can get out of earlier, call me there. If I don't hear from you, 6.30 on the nose. Right? Right. Bye, love. Bye. Well, here we go again. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. He's just put his wife on a plane for Reno. Well, that means I'd better get right down to his office as fast as I can and pick up the check. In the meantime, you phone him that a messenger is on the way. Sometimes I wonder if there isn't an easier way of making a living. Well, don't wonder. You haven't got any choice. You married me, remember? Sure, Funny, I remember. I'm not complaining. Well, you're concerned. It's funny that way. Good. How soon can you have us ready to skip this town? Uh, be back here by five. That'll give us time. I'll pack your bag so we'll be all ready to go. Great. We're as good as on our way, baby. I didn't expect 
thought you'd be in today. No, neither did I, but the best laid plans, you know. Yes. <laughs> Well, what's new? I've typed out a list of everything. It's right here on your desk. No, oh, let me see. All the calls. Mr. Brown's been taking care of your customers, and all the transactions they made are on the list, too. Very efficient, Miss Turner. Thank you. I'm sorry to hear about you and Mrs. Jameson. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Oh, things happen, I suppose. Yes, they do. What's this note about Miss Leeds? Hmm? Oh, she sold everything in her account this morning. She what? Yes, Miss Leeds said you had talked it over with her. You know I do all the trading in that account. Oh, but the account is in her name, Mr. Oh. Jameson. I couldn't question her instructions. Oh, no, it's not your fault, Miss Turner. Uh, tell me, were there any other instructions from Miss Leeds? Well, yes, she wanted the check right away. Get out to the cashier's department and stop that check immediately. Oh, the check was picked up by messenger just a few minutes ago. It, it was what? Yes, sir, she called again at noon and said the messenger was on his way. You... You remember what time exactly? Oh, it was about, oh, let me see, uh, about a quarter to twelve. Yes, because Turner, I... Mr. Turner, get me a taxi fast. What's the matter, Mr. Jameson? You look like... Like I'd lost my best friend? Well, maybe I have. Just get me that cab. Well, Barney, did you get... Ed... Hello, Susan. You're early. It's a little, maybe. I was almost too late. What do you mean? Why did you do it, Susan? Do what? Close out the account. Why did you do it? I felt like it, and the account was in my name. That money was mine. Ours. Why did you do it behind my back? That should be obvious. Well, it isn't. No one can possibly be that stupid. Susan, I put every cent I had in the world in that account. It's all right if you want the money, but... I love you, and you you hurt me and shocked me. You'll recover. Susan, darling, you don't understand. Well, you finally said it. I don't understand. Doris didn't understand. Did your mother ever understand you? Susan, it's come over you. I've never seen you like this before. You never look. Maybe I can't stand you like this. I, I love you, baby. We've got plans. In six weeks, we can get married. <laughs> oh, why don't you grow up? <laughs> Susan... What makes you think you're God's gift to women? How Doris put up with you for five years will always be a misty. Now, if you don't mind, I want to be alone. i got to finish packing. You're packing? Yes, you are. Susan, that gun in your suitcase. Skip it, Ed. You better run along. My uh, husband's due here any minute. Husband? When did you get married? About three years before I met you. And this whole thing has been a shakedown. Susan, I could kill you for this. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're not the type. You won't kill me. I'm a woman. And nice little boys don't kill women. Nice little boys need women to understand them. They don't. They just couldn't live without a woman's shoulder to cry on. No. From the cradle to the grave, nice little boys have to be mothered. No. Well, little boy, you got me miscast. I'm not your mother. No, no, Susan, you, you can't. You get away talk from me. You. You, get out of here. Leave that gun alone, Ed. I'm not a little boy. Ed, use your senses. I'm not a little boy. I'll show you. I'm going to kill you. No! No sense trying to get out that door. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. There's no mystery, however, to the story I'm about to tell you. The ever-increasing swing to signal. Starting with just a handful of stations in Southern California, the signal organization has grown and grown year after year. Until today, signal dealers serve six western states from Canada to Mexico. Obviously, folks who have tried signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, must like it. Yes, they do like it, for good reasons. Not only for signal's famous mileage, but for the thing which makes that mileage possible the extra efficiency you get from your motor when you use today's signal gasoline. And remember, extra engine efficiency means extra performance for your car, extra driving pleasure for you. That's why Signal says, if it's the tops in quality you want, when you buy gasoline, there are just two things to keep in mind. One, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. 
And now back to the whistler. It's over at last, Ed. The whole story. Your break with your wife, Doris. The terrible shock when you discovered that Susan Leeds had made a fool out of you. That she and her husband, Barney, had planned the whole thing to take away a little boy's money. That was what really brought on the blind rage, wasn't it, Ed? When she admitted that to you. And now, standing in the 7th Precinct Station, telling it quietly to the desk sergeant, you suddenly stop. Because it's all you remember, isn't it? A blinding rage, a gun flash, a murder. And that's your story, is it, Jameson? Yes. A little more to it, I guess. It's not exactly clear in my mind. She opened the door and tried to get out. I only know that I killed Susan Leeds. Uh, so you killed Susan Leeds. Oh, I don't know. Why does this have to happen to me? Well, I, I told you, I... Look, we walk in on a couple of characters we've been trying to nab for months. They're wanted in half a dozen states on everything from blackmail to larceny. We find one of them dead, the other one standing there half-dazed with a murder weapon on the floor. It's a perfect case, all wrapped up. And you walk in. But I killed her. I'm trying to tell you, I... Wait. Frank... Bring in the suspect. Oh, please, I just want some rest. You wait, I like I told you. Ah, here she is. She? Susan. So, you killed Susan Lee. No, it can't be. I, I fired the gun. I, I... You didn't kill me. But I wish you had. But I did. You were running for the door and you opened it and I pulled the trigger. Yes. Just as my husband, Barney, came in to try to help me. Your, your husband? I killed your husband. That's right, Jameson. I don't know what the DA will want to do about it, but you're going to have a hard time explaining this to a jury. It's funny, isn't it? You getting rid of a wife who doesn't mean anything to you. And I lost a husband who meant everything to me. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Willard Waterman and Betty Lou Gerson. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Frank Lovejoy and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint, as well as The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.